Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to J House Radio, episode 81. I am one of your co-hosts, Lopes. Lopes. The secret you don't want to tell your mama. But today, we have the one and only KJ with his Denzel Washington mustache. He's got that going on, you know? <laughs> He's got the flavor saver there ready for you. Oh, man. The and Denzel today's episode, uh, we're going to cover a bunch of different things. We're going to talk about The Last of Us. We're going to talk about how streaming companies are cutting their budget. We're talking about PlayStation 5. Um, I just got one, so KJ is going to get his, uh, get my thoughts on it. We're going to talk about God of War because he's playing that. Um, mm. Where is my email? Because I want to make sure I don't miss nothing. Okay, okay. Most is on point today, guys. Yeah. That, that man on go. point. Um, and KJ is going to talk about something he's watching called Shrinking. Yes. And we ain't talking about every time you go in the pool and the water's cold. We that ain't one, talking about that. That definitely came uh, off really weird. We have no weird. random fact of the week. We are talking <laughs> about The Last of Us, like I said. Um, and we're talking about Ghostbusters Afterlife Part 2 and some details from the MCU. We need we need to tell people about all the areas and places <laughs> they can reach us. Not just YouTube. There's Spotify. Of course. Of course. There's Apple Podcasts. Hello? There's Every place where you can reach a popular podcast, you will find us this because right we are the podcast of pop culture and yes, we sir. are people that you should listen to because yes, sometimes sir. we're dumb. Sometimes we're, we're silly. Sometimes we crack on each other and we're also waiting for chocolate bunnies to appear. Uh, <laughs> so we should talk. Oh, and we also can't forget to talk about our patron. Okay. But you know, okay. I'll let you talk about that. Uh, yeah, so patreon.com forward slash uh, the J house. Um, you guys can check us out, and plus, we'll have the link in the description below. And, and if you're watching the audio, listening to the audio version of this, this will be in the show notes as well. You guys can check us out there. Um, with as little as a dollar a month, you guys can support the podcast and you know, keep us going and help us uh, to keep bringing content to you guys and hopefully expand to bring different kind of content to you guys pretty soon. And um, coffee. And coffee, of course, you know, Lowe's cannot survive without his coffee chat. Can't do it. Um, yeah. So we're going to jump into our PWLs right now. Um, and Lowe's, I'm going to already ask you, man, how are you enjoying the PS5? I heard you just got your hands on that big boy. Yes, what do you think? I just got the PS5. It was my Valentine's Day gift, believe it or not. Okay. Um, but she like everywhere we went, it was out. And then we just walked in the GameStop and it was there which was super fortunate for us. It was just sitting uh, in GameStop? Wow. Yeah, in GameStop, we were able to get one. Two blocks from the house. Jeez. I I, I guess the, uh, you know, the uh, surge of uh, consoles being out of stock everywhere is finally over now. So I think it's good. more so that people gave up on buying it at a local store. Mm -hmm. And now that's why it's starting to appear. But once people start realizing, hey, they're back in stores, it's going to go back to the same thing again. Yeah, because honestly, for me, I still have yet to see a PS5 or Xbox Series X in stores like up to now. I still don't see them in any store that I go to. So. I will tell you this much, though. The thing is huge. Yeah, it is. I did not realize how physically big the PS5 was. Yeah, it's it's, it's huge. Bro. Um, And when I went because like, I got the disc version because don't get me wrong. All right. I know the digital one is cheaper, but I still want the discs because I still want to play my PS4 games on there. Okay. I still want to be able to buy a physical game and put it in there um, because a lot of times these companies that you pay for a game and you download it, mm -hmm. you actually don't own it. You only license it. So at any point, they can just cut you off. That is true. But if you own a physical game, it's yours. That's actually one of the reasons why I prefer to have the physical um, edition is because of the same things, because of the license and the games that I already own. Plus, I have a lot of DVDs, you know what I'm saying? So I, yeah. I like to I like to keep DVDs. I like to still collect DVDs, honestly. Um, so but that's good, though. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it. It is freaking huge. Um, I had to stuff mine somewhere in my little TV stand. I'm going to eventually find a better place to put it. But uh, yeah. That's good. What are you playing on it right now? Um, I couldn't find a PS5 game that I was like physical. Okay. That I really, really wanted to play. So I picked up a game I've been wanting to play but haven't played. I picked up Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Oh. And okay. with the upscaling, Jesus Christ, it is crisp. It's, it's, it's beautiful, right? It's beautiful. Oh my God. It is <laughs> gorgeous. What kind of what kind of TV do you have? What kind of TV are you playing on? 
um, a Vizio. Because I have it in my bedroom. I don't have it in the living room. Okay. If I have it in the living room, I'd never be allowed to play because someone's playing Hogwarts. Yeah, yeah. So I threw it in my bedroom, and I have a little uh, 24-inch TV okay. that I use as a second monitor for my... Wow, that's kind of messed up. That yeah. I have a dual-headed computer, dual-headed um, uh, Mac Mini okay. in my bedroom for my casual stuff. And all my music and everything else I have on a, a, a 43-inch screen. Jeez. <laughs> it's a TV. Yeah, true, true, true. You know, because I'm not doing any color correction anymore, so it really doesn't matter if the colors are off a of hair, you know? Yeah, that is true. That is true. Uh, Kira in chat said, yeah, by us, we ended up getting the last of both systems. Oh, when yeah. you guys went shopping? Yeah. Oh, wow. Lucky you guys. Lucky you guys. Um, But that's what's up, man. Uh, Are you watching anything or listening to anything currently? Oh, wait, wait. On your PWA? Before, before oh. we move on to watching. Okay. Um, I am so, like, listen, I am not a big Harry Potter fan, but I've watched all the movies and I, I try to learn about it because my girl's a huge Harry Potter fan. Mm -hmm. And man, that game is gorgeous. It, it does look that, beautiful. It really captures the aesthetics of the movie, the location and everything else. And each location is different enough. Mm -hmm. Now, this is just for me casually watching her play. Like, you can navigate around, uh, around Hogwarts mm -hmm. and it becomes very familiar. Like I was really surprised how good it is. Wow. And the other thing that surprised me was when you pick your character and customize it, mm -hmm. there is a ton of different types of characters. There's characters that look like me. There's characters that look like you, the characters that look like her. Yeah. And there's characters that look like typical English people. Mm -hmm. You know, that, so uh, honestly, yeah, I'm actually, I was actually really surprised how good the game looks i was really surprised at how many people love the game and how it's it's still it's still kicking man like even on like uh twitch and things like that people are still streaming the crap out of that game it, it's you know it's what amazing. but i called it though i called yeah, it yeah you did I said it was gonna be... you did <laughs> i was if very not surprised the game of the year pretty close i 100 think it would definitely i would be surprised if it's not at least nominated for game of the year i i, I feel like it's definitely going to be in the conversation for sure like it yeah. has to be. All right. So, um, what are you? What's on your watching and listening list right now? If you have anything on there, uh, watching, I am watching uh, Star Trek Picard. Oh yeah, this is the final season, right? I believe. Right. Okay. Um, see, the problem with with saying what are you watching? We watch certain things for the podcast, and then mm -hmm. we only have time for maybe like one or two shows in our own life. <laughs> Exactly. So I had to pick one. I'm a big Star Trek fan, so I picked Star Trek Picard, and it is so good. Season one and two of Picard was eh, it was watchable, mm -hmm. but it had it had filler episodes. You know okay. what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. But this one, three episode three three episodes in out of ten, and there isn't a second that is just filler. It is good through and through. And when you're done watching the one hour episode, mm -hmm. you feel like, wait, this episode's too short. And then you check the runtime and you're like, oh, it's an hour. He's like, oh, that's Damn, it. The show is good. That's it. That's all we got. Exactly. <laughs> it's so good. That's good, man. I'm glad you're enjoying it, man. Cause I know you like out of all the people I know, you are the biggest Star Trek fan I know, period. So I'm well, definitely you know what though? Here's the thing that. though. I am a fan and I love the show, but I have no need to wear the uniform. I have no need to like fight people on Reddit about <laughs> discovery or Star Trek or this, that, and the other thing, mm -hmm. you know, like I love the show because I love the stories it tells and the way it can tell them, yeah. you know, and you really fall in love with some interesting characters. Yeah. So that's why I love it. Do you, uh, so how many episodes are they planning on having for this like final season? Do you know? Of Picard, 10. 10. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Sounds good, though. I mean, maybe one day I'll get around to it. One of these oh, no, days. no, 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 no. You days. forgot. You're promising me that we're reviewing season two of Strange New Worlds. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're right. I thought you meant Picard. I was like, oh, I didn't even start no, Picard no, no. yet. <laughs> Picard, you won't get. You, you, you would have to watch too much backstory for it yeah that honestly i was intrigued at it at, uh, intrigued about it at one point and then i realized that there are so many callbacks that well i realized that there probably would be so many callbacks 
that there's just a lot of stuff that I'm just like, I would just, it would just go over my head. I can send you a video that talks about, we'll catch you up on all the important things in the Star Trek universe in 20 minutes. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Uh, so I, I guess if I decide to watch Picard, I guess that'll help me out then. We can do that. So uh, what are you watching? <clears throat> um, Right now, I am watching Shrinking, which is a show on Apple TV+, Plus, which I feel like 90% of the shows that I watch is typically on Apple TV at this point. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty much about a therapist who, um, and this is no spoilers, it's in the, it's in the trailer, who uh, loses his wife, and he's having a hard time being a therapist, and then he finds a way of connecting to his clients by giving them therapy in very unorthodox ways, like having one of his clients live with him, so on and so forth, uh, and just kind of going through these extremes on trying to help them make their life better. Um, Harrison Ford is in this. Um, he's actually pretty hilarious. Um, it's a pretty good show. It's it's. Um, I'm trying to think of what it would be compared to to try to give you an example of what kind of comedy it is. Um, can't really think of anything off the top of my head, but it's hilarious. I love it. Uh, the main actor, um, I don't, let me, you know what? Let me pull up IMDb and give you some of these actors. I was about to do the same thing right to myself. <laughs> IMDb, I choose you. Um, Yo, we got to get in touch with their marketing department. I know. Like, can, can we get a, can we get a freaking sponsorship or something, please? Um, so yeah, uh, Jason, Jason Siegel is in it. I like some of his work. Uh, he does pretty well, uh, but he's... Oh, the one from... Um, oh, crap. What's the name of that movie? He's been in so many films. Where his girlfriend point. dumps him while he's naked. Most re- is, is is that one of his recent films that just recently came no, out? No, no, no. That's the only one of his that pops into mind. Uh, I don't know, then. I'm not sure. Uh, but I, I have seen some of his previous films before. He He's pretty funny. He has his moments here and there. He has his moments. Uh, and then, and like I said, Harrison Ford is in this. There's a lot of actors and actresses in here that are pretty new. Um, that I either first on the scene or I just haven't seen them in anything else before, honestly. But I think it's a pretty good movie. It's pretty funny. Um, right now I'm on episode six. Episode seven is dropping Friday as of as of the recording of this episode. So I would definitely say check it out. It's, it's pretty cool. Definitely check it out. Um, I know a couple of the actors on this show. Oh yeah, which ones do you know? Uh, Krista Miller, obviously Harrison Ford, Ted McGinley. You know him from um, Married oh, with Children. Terrible. Yes. Wow. Why didn't I think of that when I saw him? You know, but I saw his face and I was like, man, he looks a little familiar. I just you know I, what I it is. Get it. He's aged well, so because he's aged well, you don't automatically think of. That Mayor, actor, which, yeah, because you, you expect him to look older. That that's probably what it is. That's probably what it is. Because I'm I'm just expecting somebody else. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a pretty good show. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're looks looking good for his age, I mean, like, oh yeah, he does. He definitely does. So I mean, if if you guys are looking for something, you know, with some good comedy in it, honestly, um, it's it's kind of a it's it's a very I don't want to say dark comedy, but like mild comedy, basically. Uh, so, okay. yeah, you know, check it out. I think it's pretty good. Apple TV has been really killing it lately. Um, they're also dropping a, uh, a, um, a film soon called Tetris, which talks about. Yes, I saw the saw trailer that? for that. That looks, that looks good. It looks good, man. I didn't know that there was a, a big story behind the whole Tetris game. Oh, huge you know? story. I didn't know that until I saw this trailer and I was just like, man, I, I can't wait to watch this. So I saw a 10 minute YouTube video on Tetris. And in those 10 minutes, they literally said there is so much more that has happened that we can't talk about. Really? Yeah. And I, you know, in that short little piece, I'm assuming it's because of all the craziness of this. And the guy who brought Tetris over works for Microsoft now. Really? Yeah. in a low level job. Wow! Well, uh, as of the uh, time of that documentary. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. That's interesting. That's that's very interesting. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm watching. Um, as far as playing right now, honestly, I'm just finishing up God of War. I mean, just just trying to finish that right now. Uh, I think I'm like halfway through it. I've been mainly really focusing on that. Try not to play anything else until I like actually finish God of War. I'm freaking loving it. Story's amazing. Um, 
And yeah, I don't really want to talk too much about it without giving away spoilers. So, Yo, are you playing <laughs> any mobile games? Um, mobile games. What am I playing on mobile? Let me actually pull up my phone right now. What am I playing on mobile? I'm playing, I'm playing this Am- Angry Birds Dream Blast, and I'm okay. so hooked. And I'm like, why am I hooked on this <laughs> little game, <laughs> bro? But like a crackhead, I'm hooked on that game. Oh man, honestly though, it's always the stupid little games that get you, man. They always get you. You know what I mean? Um, as far as what I'm playing on mobile, I am playing this game called Vampire Survivors. I don't know if you heard about that. It no, is it is it is free on it is free in the Apple Store. I don't I don't know about anywhere else. Uh it's it's like a it looks like an old school retro game where you're pretty much you're playing these different characters and you're just trying to survive a horde of monsters. It's super simple. It sounds super simple, but for me it's been so addicting. And I don't really play a lot of mobile games. I really don't. But this has been the most addicting mobile game I have ever played. You know, so I th- I think you should check it out. It's called Vampire Survivors. It's free. It's fun. It's simple. You can play it with a controller or you can play with it with a touch screen. Try it out. I love it. All right. I'll check it out. So that that's a lot of PWL for us right there, guys. <laughs> um all right, oh, let's, listening to listening to house music. Uh listening for me, honestly, I'm still listening to film soundtracks. That that has been my shtick lately. Uh, every time there's a new movie that comes out or a new game that comes out, uh, I've been listening to a lot of a lot of film soundtracks. On the game aspect, I like I like the uh, how they mess like how they play around with the opera sound in certain games, uh, especially like the God of War soundtrack. Freaking amazing right. for that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I've been listening to basically. So, uh, I we actually have I actually have a credit for. Um... I forgot if I gave it to myself for the studio for soundtracks. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember that. It was called The Cover-Up. Ricky had brought us that job, and I wound up editing it and everything else. And blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, I got, I got a credit for soundtrack. Oh, that's pretty cool. Look at Los. Los is all famous over here. Oh, I wish. Too big for us little people. <laughs> yeah, see, uh, where's soundtrack? No, well, music by, and then I have my artist name. Oh, oh, uh, Tama. Yeah, I'm a strong bear. Yeah. Okay. So, I have I have that credit. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Um. All right. So let's get ready to jump into our show notes. Uh, the first thing I guess we can do. Uh, we can get this out of the way. Not really get this out of the way. I don't want to say it like that. But the Last of Us. The Last of Us episode seven left behind review. Um, the the most recent. Oh, don't episode. forget we got to review a little bit of six too because we didn't get a chance to do it. Oh so yeah, it's true. A six and seven review. All right, so all right, so let's start with six. Um, episode six. I'm trying to remember what even happened on six. I feel like every time I watch an episode and go to the next one, I forget what happened on the last one. Uh, he met up with his brother. Yes. All right. So episode six. Um, jeez, it's kind of a blurb at this point but i'll try to remember what i can um i thought episode six was great when they when they went to the town and this is not really a spoiler because it's in the trailer uh when they when they arrived at the town that hit a nerve for me because uh it literally looked like they ripped the town straight out of the game and put it right in the tv show it was like literally building for building table for table bottle for bottle like every little thing that i remember every spot that i remember from being in the game was like in the show like the attention of detail is immaculate on this show it is immaculate um i wasn't expecting them to get you know to end up in that town that soon um but it was it was kind of nice to see it i'm glad that he got to you know obviously meet his brother and things like that i thought it was a great episode overall so your thoughts, Los, your thoughts. I like the six and seven are actually good episodes. Okay. Seven, like hearing what the story is going to be about, you think it's going to drag and be really boring, and it actually wasn't, which surprised me. Mm-hmm. But six I really liked. Okay. But there's a couple things about the episode that kind of bothered me. Okay. Okay. That? Um, one, Joel's PTSD. Because he never hinted to it before. 
Yes, that was weird, right? It just came out of nowhere. Yeah. So that that was a little weird for me. But cuz I would love I would love to have seen hints of it in previous episodes. Yeah. So when it hits this hard, you're like, "Oh shit, you know, like he's this is really getting to him." Mhm. Um when Joel meets well, when Joel is told who his brother's wife is. To me, it felt a little racist. Really? I don't know if I yeah. got that vibe from that. Have you ever seen uh, um, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? Yes. Sidney Poitier? Mm-hmm. It felt like that. Just the fact that he didn't say anything for a while. Okay. You know, it's, and I was it's... like... Am I reading that right? It's you know? funny. It's funny you say that because I did not get that vibe. It's so interesting that you had that vibe. I was actually when I saw him get confused. I just thought maybe he was almost like jealous that his brother had time to move on, get a wife, and do this and that, and yet he's still sitting here worried about where his brother is, and he's uh oh, no, never mind, you're good. Uh, where where his brother is, and like he's like damn near dying, and all this other stuff, just just to get to where he is. I thought maybe that's why, or honestly, I don't even know. I don't know why he gave that look. I just assumed that it was for something that we just didn't know yet, or maybe he was just jealous. I I don't know. I, I you know what? I didn't get jealousy out of it. Okay, I didn't. Um. I, and it just, it just, it felt like maybe because I've gone through those moments, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Where like you meet your girl's parents, they kind of look at you and they're like, what the hell is this brown fella doing here? <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? And maybe because I've gone through that, I've seen it through that lens, but that's what it almost felt like to me. And they don't really interact. That is so interesting. That I, did, I did not even think about that. I feel like I have to go back and watch that episode now, at least that particular scene. Yeah. I have to go back and watch that. Uh, that is interesting that you said that, though. It's very interesting. Um, the, the other thing was the CGI monkeys look terrible. There were monkeys? I forgot about the monkeys. What scene yeah, were they remember in? When they remember when they wind up in the university? Dang. Why does it feel like... I just watched that episode not too long ago, and I, I, I forgot certain parts already. I completely forgot. Um... Yeah, I, I got to go back and look at that. You've been I, thinking about God of War, that's why. Probably. I completely forgot about that episode. <coughs> at least that particular part in that episode. I so. did like the episode. And, and I did like the fact that that like they showed that even in the apocalypse, there is a small bit of normalcy in there. Yeah. Yeah, basically. So I did that's enjoy what that where it that. wasn't all... <coughs> 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 Sorry. And he helped my spit. <laughs> That it wasn't all doom and gloom. So I did enjoy that. Okay. And the two old folks in the beginning were hysterical. Yeah, I, I freaking love that. That was a nice interaction for sure. Yeah. Um, I would definitely say I love the scene where Joel and Ellie uh, run into the, com well, the people on the horses. And then they have the dogs come out to, like, sniff out which one of Joel and Ellie is infected. And if they're infected, the, the dog's going to rip their face off. Yeah, I love that scene. I thought that was very intense. I thought that was pretty cool. I don't remember if that was in the game, um, but yeah, overall, I thought it was a good episode. It was nice. To, it was it was nice to see him finally run into Tommy, um, yeah. and kind of set up what we're about to head into. You know, with the relationship with uh, Tommy and and uh, Joel. But obviously, Tommy didn't go with him by the end of the episode. Uh, so I'm wondering if we're gonna come back to that relationship this season or if they're going to save that for next season uh does that happen in the game um eventually i believe so i believe that they do run into each other again eventually um but like i said it's just been so many years since i played that game i probably should have played through it again but yeah uh <laughs> all right um, so but i also liked how at how how the episode ended with the piece of the bat Getting embedded in Joel, and him oh kind of yeah, like playing off. yeah, true, yeah, um, and that leads into episode seven, where they literally just pick up almost maybe like ten minutes later after he fell off the horse. Yeah, and you really see this girl, Ellie, make that decision: should I, or should I help him? And 
she's lost so many people in her life that she's like, I'm not losing another one. And she tries to keep them together. Yeah. I, I think that's that point where you finally get to see that relationship take that next level. I feel like each episode we we get to a point where the relationship does elevate or go down a peg or two. And this is one of those episodes where you see it elevate to the next level where she's like, you know what? I'm actually going to be here for him. You know what I mean? So, yeah. and that comes within that decision that she made. Um, what do you, now, what do what you, did you think about the flashbacks? Um, what were the flashbacks in this episode again? Remember, remember. when she meets, um, her ex roommate, her best friend, her first kiss. Um, that was in episode six. It was right. Seven. Oh, okay. Six, so in- we've really just, you know, shows up yeah. at the town, meets his brother, oh, words, yeah. <laughs> words, you know, he tries right. to abandon Ellie. Then he doesn't. All right. So before and- we even do that, what is your, how many chocolate bunnies for episode six? Four. Four. Wow. Out Four. of five. Okay. Four five, yeah. It was really good. That might be your highest rated episode so far this season, I think. Yes. I think it's your highest rated one. Okay. And it went from a negative one to a four. So they really (laughs) picked it up. There's progress. There's progress. But but here's the thing, though. Like, do you see how making the love story a flashback makes it palatable, right? Makes Mm -hmm. it feel like it's moving the story forward. Where having that full episode where it was just about those two guys. Yeah. It was, it was a waste of story time, you know? And like I said, if it was sprinkled in as, as a flashback, I think it would have been so much better. I agree. I agree. Especially for the fact that, like you said, it was, it was a whole episode about two guys. None was it put in a flashback, put into context. And then they died. Yeah. You know, like that, like, this is it. Like they just died. And like, I get, they had a relationship with Joel that's fine and dandy, but that has nothing to do with what's going on right now. So was it worth doing all that? Like you said, it could have been a flashback. Yeah. It could have been a flashback flashback and it it would have added to the story. I think it would have been much better. Yeah. It wouldn't have been boring. I agree. I agree. Um, so for me, I, I would have to say the same thing. I I give episode, um, six or four and a half, four and a half chocolate bunnies. It was good. You liked it more than me. For me. I, I just love, I think for me, it's just more so that, nostalgia seeing that town in 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 real life so to speak um and just kind of experiencing that live action like that really hit it hit a nerve for me so 4.4.5 for me um all right our current episode episode seven well, what's your thoughts los what you think how'd you like the uh, merry-go-round <laughs> it was a good episode wasn't a great episode Uh, But it did service the story and you got to see Ellie before she became this tough girl. Yeah. You know, before she lost anything, you found out about her background. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like a three and a half, three and a quarter, you know, a little bit better than a three, but not by much. Okay. But it was good. It was still a good episode. Yeah. I mean, there's not really too much to go over in this episode, honestly, uh, because it... Uh, this episode was based off of the DLC for the Last of Us game called Left Behind, and the DLC is literally about uh, Ellie going from trying to help Joel from being sick to the flashback with her friend, so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, so this this episode was the DLC. Um, there's not really too much to touch base on besides her, um, sh- besides them showing the relationship between her and her friend. And this is where we find out in the game that uh, Ellie is a lesbian, basically. Um, yeah. Some some people did give this uh, a backlash with the simple fact of saying that why are we having two little kids, well, actors portraying little kids, kissing on live TV? Um, that was a big a big bummer for a lot of viewers. Was that something that you uh, experienced? <clears throat> I started doing math in my head and I was like, well, if Ellie's 14, when she starts the series, you figure it was a year, a year and a half before she bumps into, to, you know, the fireflies and Joel. My whole thing was why is a 17 year old interested in the 13 year old? But 
the whole thing is knowing that the main actor, main known the actress who plays Ellie is actually 19 years old. That kind of just goes out of my head after a minute. Yeah. I mean, but if those actors were actually 14 and 17, <clears throat> I have a more problem with the age difference than anything else. If she was like 16 and 17, I wouldn't care. Okay. Because there's a big difference between someone who's 14 and someone who's 17, like emotionally, maturity, and everything else. Yeah. <clears throat> that That's my only thing about it. It didn't bother me because it's make-believe. He said it's make believe. It's my make-believe. whole my whole thing is, I mean, so that so that scene was in the game, uh, the scene with her kissing and all that. Um, I don't have a problem with the story or the show in general. I do like one thing that is tough in society today, and I'll I won't stay on this topic too long because I know we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, that's tough with society t- today is that uh, I feel like they are forcing the LGBTQ thing down everybody's throats with everything on TV and music videos and movies and so on and so forth. I mean, even movies like Buzz Lightyear, uh, they had a character talking about, oh, my two moms are waiting for me to come home. And it's like, I feel like certain, like when they're getting to the point where they're starting to touch kids and try to put these stories in front of kids' faces, to me, that's a little bit of a worrisome, especially for somebody who has, you know, two little kids. Uh, I'm just worried about, the future of society when it comes to like forcing that in front of people's faces so often. I don't have a problem with, you know, having, and again, I don't know all the letters. So I'm gonna call it alphabet. Forgive me. I don't have any problem with any alphabet character. Um, the reason why it, but what I hate is the, when the, that's all the characters about, you understand? Like Agreed. they put a, a gay man in the character and all of a sudden he is, the stereotype from Chelsea with the freaking tight white t-shirt and girl and all that other stuff. I have more an issue with that, you know, than a character who just happens to be gay. There was a TV show called Sirens about an EMT squad and yeah. one of the characters were gay and they just happened to be gay. It wasn't like an issue. It wasn't like a focus of the story. It was just one of the things that happened, you know, like let's say like, like, okay, let's say you're working, you're working a job as an EMT. It's you and your partner. And yeah. you go, hey, so how, what'd you do this weekend? Oh, well, I hooked up with this chick and blah, blah, blah. How about you? And then he turns around and goes, well, I hooked up with this dude. You know, when it's just something that the character is, I'm okay with it. When it's all that the character's about, I have a problem with it. Because then, you know, that does not define someone completely. True. Sure. Sure indeed. It's like when they make a character a black character, and all of a sudden he is like the ghettoist of the ghettoist, or the white person who can't dance and he thinks mayonnaise is too spicy. You know, <laughs> like I just don't. I, I just you know that's not what a character is about. Mayonnaise you know, is too show spicy. Some variety because there are varieties of everything. Oh man, preach, <laughs> lost preach. Um, so episode seven. Um, I thought it was okay. Um, it is just like I said, it's a complete. Uh, scene for scene almost of Left Behind DLC. Um, I thought it was all right. I mean, it's pretty much just a whole episode of you know Ellie meeting with her friend, reminiscing before her friend leaves. I don't really think there was really anything impactful with this episode, uh, besides the fact of besides that one scene where we finally get to see how Ellie got got infected, about how her and her friend got bit. And I think out of the whole episode, that was probably the most important scene from the episode. So I feel like with this one, it had a lot of fat that could just been cut off. You know, uh, I don't think we needed a full hour of Ellie and her friend playing on the merry-go-round. I did like the fact that they were playing Mortal Kombat too. That was a good. That was a good shout-out right there. I like that. Which one had my... a poster of in her room. Yes, one of my favorite fighting games of all time. Games of all time. Period is Mortal Kombat. Um, so uh, aside from Mortal Kombat and her getting bit, I think we could have shaved off a lot of that extra stuff. I get they were trying to give us a love letter to the fans who played the DLC and say, hey, here's the live action version. That's nice. But I don't think we needed a full episode of it, though. I honestly didn't look at it like that. I looked at it more as the cultural difference. 
because here they're here they are going wow look at this and look at this and look at that oh my god i've only seen pictures of this mm -hmm. it, to me it almost felt like someone who you know a millennial looking you know all dropped into the middle of the 1940s and like oh my god a landline oh my god look at this oh my god look at that i i looked at it more as a culture thing you know and i didn't look at it as a date until they kissed and then i was like oh wait that was a date mm. those are things you do with somebody on a date yeah back then you went to the mall you went to the merry-go-round you went to the restaurants you fooled around, you ran around, you know, <clears throat> but I thought it was more about culture. You know, this is what they did before. Because remember, the world ended there in 2003. Yeah. You even see an iMac. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In you episode did see six. That. Yeah, you're right. You did. You did. I mean, you know, I mean, that's a good way of looking at it. Flavor pack. Yeah, I know. Those things were freaking huge, man. Freaking huge. So, I mean, that's a good perspective. That's a good way to look at it. Uh, I guess I'm looking at it like that because maybe because I played the game, and I'm just like, all right, I don't need shot for shot here. Can, you know, give me something a little different. Um, what is your overall review for this show, for for this episode, episode seven? Uh, better, better than half, but barely. So 3.25, 3.5 is what I'll give it. 3.5 you know? chocolate bunnies. Okay. Yeah, not bad. Again, not, bad. not terrible, not great, but good. Okay, I I would have to agree with you. I would give it a three point five. It, it it wasn't horrible. There was some things that I really liked, like I said, like Mortal Kombat and so on and so forth, and um, explaining how she got bit and you know things like that. That was cool. But other than that, it was it it was okay. It was alright. I guess for me, playing through that in the game felt like a a pretty amazing experience compared to actually watching it again. And I guess that's probably why that felt like that to me because I, I played through all that already. You know what I mean? Right. So and, playing and, through that was different for me. And we're looking at it from two, two different points of view. Me, who's never played the game, yeah. so it's all coming fresh to me as opposed to you, who's actually played the game, yeah. and you're waiting for certain moments to happen. Yeah. At least true. I think. I, I I think that's why going into this uh show I think it's pretty interesting. I, I think it's awesome that we had one of us that played it and didn't play it because we have some pretty pretty cool perspectives. Yeah. So, all right, so we're gonna jump into our next topic. That concludes our take one of the Last of Us episodes six and seven. Uh, Los, let's talk about your topic that you have here. I might actually skip some topics tonight because we're we're running a little late tonight, but we're gonna jump uh, into okay. your topic. <clears throat> So, streaming services are starting to cut their budgets. Uh, layoffs and cost cuts are happening throughout all the streaming platforms. Uh, what happened was during COVID, they saw the need for all this new content because people were home, people were watching and everything else. But now that we've gotten, we've gotten past the pandemic, um, <clears throat> things are changing. Netflix just fired 150 people. Disney trimmed about $1 billion off its programming budget. And Warner Brothers slash Discovery uh, says it's killing costly projects. Mm. So a lot of this just seems like economics. Uh, is reported by Bloomberg that streaming is accounted for 30% of all TV viewing. But I strongly disagree with that. I think it is more like 40 to 50%. Wow. Because how many people are really watching TV TV? Not even my mother, who's 74, is watching regular TV. She's watching yeah. the streaming service. I don't think I know anybody, but I don't think I know anybody who actually watches TV TV now. I think everybody that I know, at least that I can think of, if, they, if they're watching something on TV, it's Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max. You know, a, a lot of people I know got rid of the box. Yeah. You know, and that that's just the world that we're in right now. So, I mean, if streaming services are really uh, cutting budgets, I think it's a lot of it has to do with the last few years, especially during COVID, where a lot of these companies were fighting for attention 
and everybody's like, all right, we got to get the blockbuster. We got to get the blockbuster. We got to pay for that movie that's in theaters to be multi-stream to our service. And that costs a lot of money. So I think the past few years have been very expensive because everybody was fighting for so much attention because so many people weren't leaving the house, you know, because of COVID. So now that people are at this point where uh, they're getting more comfortable, they're going out the house more, but masks are not mandatory anymore. Um, things are starting to become in, starting to become to break even a little bit more. More people are going to the movies again. More blockbusters are exclusively in the movies for like two months. So now streaming services are probably like, all right, you know, people are starting to get out the house a little bit more. Let's try to tidy up our bills a little bit. Let's try to cut some fat and save some money so we can try to catch up on things. So I, I think that's what it, a lot of it had to do. With. I think it had to do with the fact that so many companies playing, uh, fighting, you know, over the past three years during the COVID um, pandemic era just to get attention. Well, it's more than that. I mean, like you have some of these streaming companies that are offering seven digit deals, not millions of dollars, but a billion or two billion dollar deals to filmmakers. And yeah. they just went overboard. Paramount is the first one to say, you know what? We're going to cut a big corner. They are going to cancel Star Trek Discovery after season five. They said season five is the last one. We're moving on to something else because that is their most popular show. But at the same time, it is also the most expensive show that they have. So you could see the writing on the wall. These multi-million dollar TV shows are going to be gone soon. And yeah. now you're going back to the days where people are being more creative with smaller budgets. That's true. <clears throat> that's true. I mean, I, I feel like that's going to end up being one of two things. People are going to be more creative with smaller budgets, but then we also might get a lot of, I mean, we get a lot of crap now anyways, but I feel like we're probably going to get more crap thrown at us just so that way we have something to watch. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, yeah, like they're just going to try to give us more stuff to watch, like try to keep us busy. And a lot of that is just going to be filler. You know what I mean? That's what I feel like well, might happen. I think what's going to happen now is these studios are going to go dig into YouTube and look for, look for actors and directors. Um, the director of Shazam, um, he, um, he started out on YouTube. Really? He started out on YouTube, yeah. Uh, is this him? Hold on. Yes, David F. Sandberg. He started out on YouTube making these little horror movies. Wow. <laughs> With his wife as the actress and someone else, and then he did a couple other little things. And then it started out, then he made the movie Lights Out. Remember that movie? Oh, that was actually pretty good. I like that one. Lights Out yeah. was pretty good. Annabelle Creation. That was him. Shazam, that was him. Okay, okay. So, um... Not a bad pedigree. It's not. But he started out on YouTube. And he's used to working with smaller budgets. Yeah. And I think it's almost like going back to the 90s where you got all these independent film directors and mm -hmm. writers. And, so, and they started making movies and you got this whole boom and burst of this great 90s independent cinema mm -hmm. that eventually turned into studio cinema. I think we're going to see a resurgence of that, but instead of it being for cinema, you're going to see it for streaming. It's interesting. It's definitely going to be interesting to see like where streaming goes from here on out, especially knowing that they're going to start cutting budgets. Cause a lot of, cause a lot of these shows have been very expensive. Look at stranger things, man, like Netflix paid probably their they, Netflix sold their soul to make that show. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and that show is getting, I think, one more final season, I believe. Um, but yeah, I figured that all this was going to eventually catch up with the streaming services because all, all these big expensive deals, these exclusive films and um, like films that are in theater and the streaming service at the same time. Like I figured all of that was eventually going to catch up with them. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see what these streaming services do from now on and what kind of content they're going to pump out. You know, the I other think thing is people are starting to to um, to cancel the subscription because it's now as expensive as cable used to be. Yeah, it's it's getting up there. It's getting up there. Yeah, it's, especially when you just start racking up multiple subscription services, it, it's it getting to the point where it's like you might as well just have cable at that point. 
honestly. And that's why pa- password sharing is so important. It's like, all right, you got Netflix, I got Disney, let's swap passwords, we both can have it. <laughs> exactly. You know? So you don't mind playing the Netflix, or you don't mind paying Disney because you're getting your friend's other account. I just I, I just got Netflix through my T Mobile account where I get it like I get the the standard version for free as long as I have T Mobile. So I had to worry about that. It just sucks that no. I can't watch 4K. <laughs> Kira and I pay for everything. You pay for everything? HBO Max, Discovery Plus, Peacock, uh, uh, uh Amazon Prime, Apple Plus. We pay mm-hmm. for it all. Okay. And it's okay. still cheaper than cable. <laughs> Yeah, until they start saying, all right, $40 a month for your streaming service. Man, you better start giving me some behind-the-scenes stuff. Then I'll go find a boot and a leg. (laughs) Oh, I know what you're talking about. I have no idea what you're talking about. Footwear, footwear, bro, footwear. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, let's jump into our next topic real quick. Um, We'll do two more topics. Venom 3, Los' second favorite film of all time, is in production. Wow. Are you excited? Are you ready? Oh God! Are no. you ready to see some horrible, t- like Tom Hardy and the Black Blob, just like have horrible comedy conversation and stimulate your airwaves and you and know eyeballs? What? It's not even he's not even the problem. The problem is just their terrible scripts. <laughs> like they don't know what to do with Venom. Honestly, they don't know what to do. Uh, with they Venom. really don't. I think man. in the comic books. Once they figured out what to do with Venom and they, they merged him with the Flash and they made Agent Venom and they did things like that, they, that the character took off in a better direction. Okay. Now it just kind of seems like a little schizophrenic rant and the <laughs> Venom from the first movie is not the same Venom from the second movie. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And so he's going to be completely different in the third movie and it's just going to be weird. And the rumor is they're going to bring Tom Holland into that one too. And Venom 3? Yeah, that's the rumor. I mean, I'm not uh, sure not. Tom Holland ain't, ain't, ain't coming in Venom yet. Tom Holland will rather wait for Venom to come to his movie, but he's not going to Venom's movie. He's like, well, man, remember, I'm, his I'm too big for His contract to be Spider Man is with Sony, not Marvel. Yeah, but is it? Is it? Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Venom is through uh, Sony. I forgot about that. Mm hmm. I wonder how they go because they have to merge those two eventually. Come on, Venom is one of Spider Man's biggest nemesis. It's ha- it's gonna have to happen. When are they gonna do I, it? I think what they need to do is Sony's gonna have to flop Venom three. You know they have already flopped Venom two. They already flopped Morbius. If um, uh, Craven the Hunter is a big flop, then MCU should go look. Here's a billion dollars. Just give us Spidey back. Wait, wait, wait. Money. Who's doing Craven? Is Sony doing Craven? Sony. Oh my goodness. Why? I thought I thought Marvel was doing. I mean, I thought Disney no, was doing that. Because they own the rights to the whole Spider Verse. Oh, uh, that's not good. Well, I mean characters that overlap like Kingpin can exist in the MCU and the Sony version of it. Oh uh, man. I, I don't know, man. This, this is just messy. This this Spider Man thing is just so messy. I remember there was a part in uh Venom two where like Venom the Blob was like in a bar singing karaoke, saying how he was sad, how Brock doesn't want to be his friend and doesn't want to talk to him. I'm like, what am I watching? What exactly? The f- I was like, what is this? I was so upset. This freaking alien symbiote that is literally a cannibal is in a bar singing karaoke sad because <laughs> he he got rid of his host at that point i was i was tapped out i was probably tapped out before that but that even solidified the tap out even more i i was yeah. just so upset about that but um i was able to at least bear venom 1 a little more than venom 2 like venom 1 was it was okay it felt like a 90s action flick you know yes, what I mean but it also felt like a good start yeah yeah it felt like a decent start it, it was it wasn't bad it was, yeah, it was and then okay in venom 2 all of a sudden venom is a slob <laughs> and is messing up this guy's life and that's not who venom is you know? yeah I was it just was, it was just terrible freaking horrible so if you had to guess what are we getting in venom 3 if you just had to take a while just out of out of the blue guess 
I think we're going to get a bad movie. <laughs> I think it's going to be a wasted two hours of my life. And I think it's going to have a villain that I don't care about. And I think they're going to try to get Spider-Man involved in it. I think they're definitely going to have to. I think they're going to get Spider-Man involved. He, I mean, there might even be, at the very least, there's probably going to be an end credit scene where like Peter Parker shows up or something. What I would like to see is, oh, I forget his name. The one who played the amazing Spider-Man. The only oh. Spider-Man not to get a third movie. Oh, you're talking about uh, not not Tobey Maguire, the other one, right? Yeah. The I forgot British his guy. Name. I know who you're talking about. I forgot his name. Chat, somebody help me out. Who played who played the second Spider-Man? Hold on, I'll tell you right now. Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield. Yes. I would like them to see, to use Andrew Garfield. I would like to see him come back as Spider-Man, 100%. I, I, I think he's young enough. I think he's the second youngest Spider-Man. Um, so I, I think I think he'll be good for that, honestly. He can still move around. Yeah. He can, you know, still flip and all that stuff like that. <clears throat> I would rather see him come back than Toby. People have been spreading rumors that Toby's trying to come back. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to see Toby. To- Toby's, Toby's up there in age. You know what I'm saying? Andrew Garfield, like his Spider-Man um, movies that he had, I think he had two movies. Two, yeah. Very underrated. Like his per- his performance as Peter Parker, loved it. It's a little darker. It's a little bit, a little more serious. But I like that because it's different compared to all the Spideys that we've gotten over the years. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I would like to see him come back. Uh, I don't know how they would intertwine that with the story. But it would be nice to see Andrew Garfield come back, to be honest. All they have to do is just have him show up. You expect Spider-Man to be in the Venomverse. Yeah. now that, Especially now that there's multiple Spider-Mans involved now. You can kind of do whatever you want, honestly. Exactly. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, for me personally, as far as what I would want to see... Um, I don't I don't want to see a Venom 3 at all. <laughs> like I, I really don't care. I don't want to see it. Unless they're setting up something with Spider-Man. I don't think we need a, what is the point of a Venom 3? There's no point. There is none. So that is the only way I want to see a Venom 3 is if they're planning on starting something, setting up something with Spider-Man. If they're not doing yeah. that, don't waste your time. That's my that's my take on it. Chat, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think, chat. What do you want to see or what do you think should happen in Venom 3? All right. Our last topic that we want to jump in tonight. Um, This one is interesting. Uh, Well, actually, I want to say one thing real quick. I guess you might as well just talk about this really quick. A few seconds. Ghostbusters Afterlife 2. Um, Jason Reitman Reitman, Reitman posted on social media that um, they are going to be shooting or the film is going to be taking place in the old school um firehouse from the original ghostbusters oh that's nice freaking excited freaking excited um i know you didn't see afterlife los please watch it it's it's actually a fun movie it's we have to literally stop reviewing stuff for me to watch (laughs) for real i I watch the things i have to watch for the podcast i do research for things i have to do for the podcast and then I have like an hour, maybe an hour and a half to watch something on, you know, on a streaming service. And okay. I choose Star Trek. Okay. I feel you. Well, whenever you can squeeze it in, man, watch it. it. It was actually pretty good. I was surprised at how entertaining it was. It was very entertaining. Yo, I still need to see everything everywhere all at once. Yes. You know what? That is a good idea. Once we're done... The Last of Us uh, take one uh, run series. We're going to do a take one on everything, everywhere, all at once. Because I've been wanting to watch that movie. I haven't watched it yet. So I'm going to wait. Because I was actually thinking about renting it. I'm going to wait until after we're done with Last of Us. Then we're going to watch it. We're going to review it. We're going to talk about it. Because people keep clamoring about this film. It's won many awards. And they're saying that it's amazing. And I'm thinking to myself after watching the trailer, what is making this so amazing? It looks like it's okay to me. Bro, it's got short round in it. Yeah, I, I forgot. From Indiana he was, Jones. I forgot he was in that, by the way. You don't but, know yeah. fun, Dr. Jones. <laughs> yeah, you know what? He's actually trying to get into the MCU. Did you hear? Yeah. 
yeah he's he's been like sending messages and tweets and everything like hey like get me in here like you know hitting up Favreau, trying to get somebody to he get him in the MCU. In I, I i would i would love to see him in there i would love to see him in there um all right so our last topic that we're gonna jump into for the night one of me and los's favorite characters in marvel right now captain america um sam wilson captain america sam wilson captain america uh new world order and man that is such a freaking hard title i love that title captain america new world I'm order excited for that yes next year man you know what we should actually go see that one together we haven't seen the movie together in a while like it, it's it's been yeah. too long the last movie we saw together scott pilgrim versus the world <laughs> did you know that was it really? Yeah, that was the last movie we saw together. It was Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. No, the last one in theaters. The last one we saw together. You oh, yeah, in. yeah. <laughs> Listen, we got to go back to that, okay? We got to go back to that. The last okay. movie the last movie we saw in theaters, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. So, um, yes, we have to go see Captain America for sure. So, um, apparently, Marvel is trying to find ways to keep spoilers and everything off the internet. Because, you know, when it comes to MCU movies, we got people who are breaking code to get into the MCU headquarters to, like, get scripts and things like that. So apparently, um, according to Marvel, they have a secret location that has a password to get into the building to get to a computer that obviously has a password to get into the computer so that way the actors can read the script while an intern crazy. stares at them as they read it crazy security like we we've heard so many movie studios go through like loops and bounds to keep like endings and leaks off the internet this is like some next level disney stuff right here yeah next level um but it's necessary though yeah i mean because yeah look what happened with wolverine the movie got leaked the script got leaked and had terrible ticket sales yeah not that Wolverine was a great movie, but it was a passable movie. It was okay. <laughs> it, was, it was all right. Um, are you... So, there was some news that came out about this film that obviously... Um, well, not really news, but some people knew that Harrison Ford is going to be playing uh, Red Hawk. But there's a twist that's happening. He's also going to be the United States president in the MCU in this film, as well as playing... Um, Thunderbolt Ross, which is something that was different from the comics. And in the comic books, he was just General Thunderbolt Ross, who eventually became the Red Hulk. But if he's becoming president, they might not even do a Red Hulk at all. Or you make it somebody else. You don't think so? Yeah. Why Why would they turn the president into the Red Hulk? <laughs> think about it. Oh, man. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe... maybe the uh, MCU is trying to switch things up a little bit, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but it also doesn't make sense. For that, they could have gone the storyline from the Ultimates Marvel Universe and have Captain America become president of the United States. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's going to be it's gonna be interesting to see what that's going to look like and what, because the actor who played the uh, president of the United States, well, who was supposed to play the president of the United States has passed away, so that's why he's taking that role. But uh, that's that's gonna be interesting. Harrison Ford, man, that's my guy right there. So, um, and apparently, like Marvel is saying that this is going to be one of the biggest Marvel films that is going to lead into, um, it's it's just there's going to be a lot of pivotal characters, a lot of pivotal moments in this film that's going to shape the MCU going forward after this film, which is pretty big, you know, for this film. It's a lot of it's a lot of pressure. For cat, you know, in this film. So yeah. Yeah, but you know what though? I'm kind of glad they're doing this with Sam Wilson and not Steve Rogers. Why so? Because they're they're moving forward. They're not they're not sticking with the old storylines. You know. Yeah. They're moving forward and showing a a a, a newer, different Marvel universe. So I'm yeah. thrilled with it. I kind of like the fact that he is a normal person, no super soldier serum, none of that. And it's more about, you know, um, the way he put it, it's hard being a black man and being Captain America. Some people will accept you for it and some people will hate you for it. Mm. 
and I kind of like that. That is true. That is true. I, you know, I actually might go back and watch that series. That that was Falcon and Winter Soldier. Good series, man. Like and I feel like unexpectedly funny too. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, yeah, it's such a freaking good series. I, I I can't I can't wait for this movie. I think it's gonna be big. Do you think? Speaking of the so um the uh, serum, do you think they will eventually have to give him the serum? If they follow the comic book, no, they won't. Okay. But would I like to see him with the serum? Absolutely. Okay. Do you think it? I mean, I feel like morally he would want to do it unless he really has to. Like he would have to be in some kind of dire situation because obviously. You're human, man. You know what I mean? There's only but so much that the body can do. You know what I'm saying? When you're, when you're dealing with, like, gods, you know, of the universe. So, but yeah, I feel like eventually it's probably going to have to happen. It's probably going to have to happen. I'm, I'm looking forward I to this film. I think it'll be kind of forced upon him. Maybe. Possibly. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to seeing what's, what's going to come out of this film. They are making out this film to be huge. So I, I mean, it's gonna be. It's it's definitely gonna be big. It's definitely gonna be big. And this is coming from like you know like Sam Wilson, man. Like he was. I w- I don't want to say he wasn't really much of a big character, but he wasn't really a big character, you know, in in Marvel for the past few years. Like he was there, he was known, but didn't really have much of an impact. He until... was bigger in the comic books. Yeah. 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 Well, it's time for him to shine, man. Time for him to shine. So, yeah, I guess we'll see. Uh, Captain America New World Order is supposed to be dropping, I believe, next year. I, I think that's when they have it uh, set for. So, Oh, I can't wait to watch that. Yeah, man. We got to make a plan to go see it for sure. Um, all right, Lois, do you have any closing thoughts? Anything you want to share with the people? Any recommendations before we get out of here? Yes, here are my closing thoughts. If you, the watchers and listeners are enjoying the Denzel Washington mustache on uh, on KJ. Uh, leave us a like. Leave us a comment. We would appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs down. Or give it a razor up or razor down. Thumb to shave it. I don't know. <laughs> one of the two. A razor down. Uh, also, don't forget that if you would like a sexy shirt for your partner, don't forget about the J House, J House Radio merch. Let's face it. There's nothing sexier than seeing your partner in one of those shirts. <laughs> uh yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Okay. Um yeah, same here. Um like Lo said, just um make sure you guys leave a like for sure, subscribe. It definitely helps us out. Um if you guys want to stay up to date on any content that we're dropping or any videos that we're dropping, that's the best way to do it. If you guys are listening to us on the audio version of the podcast, leave a review that helps push us up in the algorithm. And don't forget to check out our Patreon in the link below. Support the co- the podcast financially if you guys are able to. Uh, and don't my... forget to like and comment on us on all social media, especially TikTok, because uh, that's the one we're kind of investing in right now. We would definitely need your support. Yeah, I definitely appreciate you guys on TikTok, man. Like our, our TikTok has been kind of booming lately, and uh, I appreciate I appreciate the you know the the love over there, man. You guys been yeah. really really viewing us over there and giving us some likes over there. I'm, I'm loving it for sure. Um, my recommendation I would definitely say is uh Abbott Elementary. Uh, it's it's on Hulu right now. It's about a school based in Philadelphia. Um, if you like, I feel like I don't know if I recommended this before. I'm starting to feel like I have, but yeah, if I, I did it, before. I did before. All right, I'm gonna recommend it again because the new season just dropped and it's freaking amazing. It's hilarious. If you liked The Office, this is basically The Office missed in with. An elementary school. It, it's freaking hilarious. I, I definitely think that you should check it out. Um, everybody, the, the guy who plays everybody loves, everybody hates Chris. He's in it. So just, just freaking watch it, man. Yeah, Good the show. main actress was in. God, what was the name of that? The main, the main actress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In from Abbott Elementary. She was. Uh, in, she was in BuzzFeed. Yes. Yes. Yeah, she was in BuzzFeed. Uh, Quinta Brunson, Bronson, Quinta Bronson, I think that's her name. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. She's she's the main actress, and she's the creator of the show too. By the way, oh, she's the creator. Yeah, 
So she's doing her thing, man. Doing her thing. It's, it's, it's definitely a good show. I really, I really recommend you guys check it out. It's it's hilarious. Freaking hilarious. I love it. Um, other than that, that is it, guys. That is J House Radio, episode 81. I appreciate you guys hanging out live, watching us, watching us in the um recorded version or checking us out on the audio version. So Los, give your goodbyes. You gave the intro. Love peace and chicken grease. Do the outro. Give us, Everybody. give us, give us Denzel a smooth. Washington's mustache is different. I want you to give us a smooth. It's you, and it also fits KJ's face. <laughs> I might get rid of it now just because of that. No, I, I just like the most chops. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to give us a smooth, sultry, like, like HBO After Dark, not not like explicit, but <clears throat> HBO After Dark outro for the people if they can remember. Uh, okay, wait. wait. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so all our listeners out there just remember now that you've listened to this podcast you can go to your partner and be like oh baby I'm ready for you <laughs> that's right <laughs> you're going to wear your sexy shirt go Jails. over to your partner and be like baby let's get it on <laughs> and with that we shall leave you oh, with man. those thoughts and once yes, again sir. this has been J House Radio the pop culture podcast we love you guys, man. Peace and chicken grease. Adios.